Now with those new developments in the Penn State hazing case, a blow to the prosecution and Timothy Piazza's family. ABC's Gio Benitez is here with the latest. Good morning, Gio. Hey, Robin, good morning. A judge had already dismissed the very serious charges once. Prosecutors refiled them in the fall, hoping they'd stick. Now the judge tossed them out again. Tim Piazza's family watching in disappointment. This morning, a judge dismissing the most serious charges against some of the former Penn State frat brothers who were charged in the death of 19-year-old pledge Tim Piazza. In a blow to the prosecution, the judge dropping involuntary manslaughter charges against five of the students. But they still face a slew of other charges, including tampering with evidence, reckless endangerment, and hazing. They have pleaded not guilty. This is a very serious prosecution, which still has remaining 560 counts against 26 individuals, each count in and of itself carrying a year in jail. Piazza died in February 2017 following an alcohol-fueled hazing ritual. Surveillance video from the Beta Theta Pi House shows him downing at least 18 drinks in less than 90 minutes. That night, he fell repeatedly, even down a flight of stairs. The frat brothers waiting 12 hours before calling 911 the next morning. Throughout the night, they, they slapped him, they poured drinks on him, they laughed at him, they flipped him around, uh, all while he needed to go to the hospital. Prosecutors allege the students tried to cover up the drinking and that one of the students deleted video evidence from the basement. The FBI later recovered it, and this week it was played in court. Piazza is seen participating in alcohol-fueled fraternity rituals, eventually staggering toward the basement stairs. We haven't watched the video at all. It's bad enough that we have our imagination. I don't need to see it, my baby suffering like that. No. Penn State permanently banned the fraternity's chapter, and the university announced it made changes to its Greek life policies, like hiring more people to monitor their activities. Robin. Gio, thank you. And our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams, and veteran felony prosecutor Nancy Grace are with us as well. Good to have you both here. You called this. You called this. You yeah, said this was going to happen. I did. I mean, I sat here with a, a different legal analyst, and we debated whether the judge was going to change the opinion, and I said that I did not think the judge was going to change the opinion on the issue of involuntary manslaughter. Let's be clear. There are still a lot of charges out there. The prosecutors tried a new theory to get in involuntary manslaughter, uh, basically saying that once they gave him the alcohol, they had a duty to help. The problem with that theory is that there's no evidence that they knew he was in danger. They knew he was drunk. They didn't know necessarily that I'm he was in danger. To control myself I know, because the, you look yeah, on their yeah. their cell phones, like Dan's cell phone. Boy, would I like to get into this? And they're looking up too much alcohol, cold body, stiff, this is, turning pale. Of this course, is, they knew something yeah. was wrong. When your body's stiff, Robin, something is wrong. And I want to point out that involuntary manslaughter does not require an intent to kill. It means that you're grossly negligent or you have uh, an abandoned heart towards somebody else's suffering that you know there's a known risk. What could be more clear? And one more thing about this, this judge, I'm very suspicious. I've been doing some research on him. And according to his own bio when you ran for judge mm -hmm. or something missing a law degree what do you mean there's, she doesn't have a law degree well I, i'm not saying he doesn't have a law degree i'm saying on his it's own bio okay. it's not there okay. and i looked up the rules there and for a magistrate judge you don't have to go to law school you can take a course you, you could be a supreme court justice without going to law school okay. i don't advise yeah, it yeah all right just but Anyway. But but yeah, yeah, but but many do see this as a setback to the prosecution. It is no, a no, setback. No, it no, is no, a setback. No, it's no, a setback no. for the prosecution. But you know what? This is a tough call for a judge to make. Meaning, when it's you not. get yes, it meaning I think it's actually a brave legal decision. Meaning that whether it's right or wrong, this judge clearly believed that as a matter of law, whether it's should, right or wrong, yes, yes. don't you have a problem with it being N wrong? No, no. The bottom line is that I think it was brave of this judge to be able to say, I'm going to evaluate the law here just the law and determine whether I think it reached a certain level because you know what with all this public pressure everyone wants one to see thing. one more thing everyone they wants to see the most still, significant charges out there but they are there. still facing charges a whole Very slew weird, of charges but I just want to point Mr. out that in addition to having head injuries spleen lacerated as he lie there during all these hours 80 percent of the blood in his body leaked, bled out in his abdomen, and um, they stood by and let that happen. All right. Well, we'll see what happens going forward, and we'll see what happens with the both of you. You'll be back in our last half hour. Your new show will be debuting.
and you gave us a little sneak peek. You gave her top billing. You know, you know, Race what can Zabers? you do? You know, do you, you know, it's. Uh, I didn't want to get in a fight about that too. Yeah. You know, I figure we got I enough understood. things. We got enough things to fight about. I yeah.